Hey everybody. So tough times. We can't get to the groomer and the groomer can't get to us, but I want to talk to you a little bit about brushing. Now, usually I, I tell my customers like what kind of brush they should have and things that we should do. And I know that many of you guys do brush your dogs at home, but for those who do not, perhaps this will be a little bit helpful. Now, I have border collies at home, so I really can't show you on a poodle coat, but I can still show you the procedure and how it works. Hey, good job, Brecky. Nice. Um, this is my guy. And uh, he's got enough long fur, like on his bum and his tail area, that I can show you a little bit. So, let me start off by saying, if you don't have a proper brush, I understand not everyone has bought a brush for their dog, but you really should have one. That should be part of, you know, like, I own a couple of dog things, you know, like every owner who has a dog should have a couple of dog things. They should have a bowl, they should have brushes, they should have a comb. It's okay if you don't, I get it. <laughs> but even if you had to take like your own regular hairbrush, that's better than nothing, okay? So if you're at home and you're thinking, I don't have a grooming table, that's part of why I'm sitting on my floor. I'm sitting on my floor with my little gooberkins. Um, and I'm just going to show you, if you hold the hair up and see what I'm doing. <laughs> Dude, I know, I hear the mailman too. But you see what I'm doing? And brushing from the part, that means that we know I'm getting all the way to the skin. Now... With this type of brush, it's not going to be great for something like taking out a tangle. But at this side, I'm using this as more of an example of your own regular hairbrush. Just wash it with some hot water and soap after you've used it on your dog. Tough times. Usually I would say go out and buy a proper brush. What would a proper brush be? So there are lots of choices, but for most dogs, for most coat types, I would suggest a slicker brush. Now I'm going to move it closer to the camera so you can see. All right. It's got these little pins. See those? All right, those are what really get down into the coat. And you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. Right? See how gentle I'm being with it though? <laughs> Dude, where are you going? All right, now, if you do have something like this, you wanna start with a part and just be gentle. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Okay, and huh, you know what? You're right. I can give you another cookie. You can make this fun for your dog. Go ahead and give him some cookies. Yeah, no, 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 no. He's not used to getting cookies during brushing. He thinks this is pretty neat. One of the mistakes I see owners making is they take a brush. Let me get him in the frame really well. And they just go straight down, right? If I do that right now, I can guarantee any little pieces that are twisting are going to mat up really tight. And then I would end up just yanking it out by the roots. That's why dogs don't like being brushed by their owners. <laughs> That's why dogs are very different for a professional than they are for their owners. So if I want to let's slide him back so you can see better, he's actually got some nice long coat back here. So even though he's not a poodle, or a long coated dog. We can work on some of this long coat. If I want to work on long coat, start at the ends. Just a little. Now there's actually a little tangle there. So just pick at it. Do you see how I'm pinching off the hair and picking at that end? So he's not alarmed by it. He's not feeling it. He just knows I've pinched off some hair. Not a big deal. Right? And then pinch off a little bit more, work on those ends, the ends first, then get down toward the skin. Now when you get down toward the skin, now we're doing the same thing, make a part, get all the way down. Do you see how I'm making a part? And then now that all of this stuff is cleared out, a little bit from above, How's that? So I'm going to show you the most important thing, more important than a brush, because a lot of owners are brushing the surface and not knowing that there's still a lot underneath. See the comb stopped? Why'd the comb stop? Because the brush wasn't going all the way through. Now where we did brush, that's going right on through 
I can feel it all the way down to the skin. So if you're using a comb, this is a pretty standard comb. Hold it up for you. <laughs> pretty standard, nothing particularly special. You don't need the $20 comb that, you know, groomers buy or the $40 comb, the $60 comb, you know, just something basic, but it's to be able to get through that coat, right? If you find a tangle, which is really what you're trying to test for with the comb, oh, there's a little tangle. Go back with the brush, right? And just gently pick at it. Gentle, 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 gentle. Now he's holding still and he's being really good because he's a groomer's dog, right? Maybe your dog isn't. <laughs> Maybe your dog doesn't know what to make of this. So if that's the case, one of the things I hear pretty often is my dog won't let me. <sighs> All right, dog owners, that's a sign of a training problem. If your dog won't let you do something, that's a big, big deal. I want you to be thinking about um, taking that out of your vocabulary and switching it up to my dog is learning how to let me or my dog does not yet know how to let me because your dog should let you do anything you need to do. One of the ways you can work on that at home is by removing the grooming equipment. Don't worry about grooming equipment in this moment. Just get them used to touching them with stuff. What kind of stuff? Stuff and things, because that's part of what it is. It's learning about being touched everywhere, being touched everywhere with stuff, being touched all over, being touched in mouths, and, and to learn how to deal with that in a way that isn't necessarily crazy playtime. And we're also not clamping down and getting upset. Clamping down and getting upset will just create more fighting. So I want you to be thinking about the stuff and things in your living room. It's a great place to start off. Like I said, I'm sitting on the floor in my living room. Here's a coaster, right? Hey guy, can I just run this over you? Always such a good boy. Always so good, right? We don't have any expectations of how to touch our dogs with a coaster, but we can still be teaching them about touching. Oh, when we're touching here. Yeah, and we're touching up here. Oh, and we're gonna touch in this direction, right? We can touch onto the belly. We can lift a paw and touch underneath armpits. Oh, we can't, just can't see that, I'm sorry. We can touch a paw, we go underneath the armpit, and we touch them all over with the thing. What other thing do I have? It's my mouse. I know, with a mouse. Oh, we do it this way, and we do it up here. Maybe we make clicky sounds with the mouse. Right? Be thinking about there are always objects around us, right? How about some uh, crochet cotton? Because I'm a crafter and I can't help myself, right? Oh, we touch you here. Okay, we gotta touch you all over. I'm touching your backside. Can you come, come up over? Rocky here. Good, nice job. So what if I wanna touch his backside? <laughs> and go ahead and play with him. I'm gonna touch you all over. A little bit of manhandling. Right? That's okay. You can be silly. It's all right. Especially if your dog isn't used to this kind of stuff. He's used to this kind of stuff. Right? Being silly. He's actually not used to me being silly about it. Let's see. What else do we have here on the table? Ah. Readers. Ready? Okay. Can I touch you with these? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Now, you might be thinking, but I don't want him to play with any of those things on my table. Good, because we don't want to teach them to play with the grooming equipment either, and that's really important. So be thinking about like, oh, I'm just going to touch you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we want to make it fun, happy, silly time. So to help with that, you might use treats. You might use snuggles. You might just do a tiny little bit while you're snuggling on the sofa, but you don't need a lot of equipment to get your dog used to being touched all over. And then when they are used to being touched all over is when you can do stuff like getting the brush in there. Oh, I know. How's that? Right? Now, I can brush on a side that I don't see. <laughs> and um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but you can actually hear when the brush hits something. But see how he's like, oh, okay, whatevs. I don't care much. Okay, top of the nose. Because you got a little bit there. Get the flavor saver. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, a comb is a super important tool. So because this is such a weird time for all of us, don't worry about going to the store and getting a brush and comb if you have something at home. You could run a plastic comb through your dog too. Um, but here are some tools that aren't necessarily very effective. Let's start off with what you often see people coming with. 
the boar bristle brush, right? You see that the, the boar bristles, not very effective. Brecky, right? Like, nah, it's, it's just going over the surface. It's not really going to do much of anything unless you have a dog like a like a short coated chihuahua like dogs that actually have fur that's about this short right a boxer this would be nice on a boxer um maybe one of the pitties right this might be a, a good choice but for most dogs with any sort of coat that you're worried about you know getting tangled and getting matted this is not a great tool it is however a good tool about teaching them to learn to be brushed because it's not going to hit a snag and it's not going to hurt because <laughs> it's not going to do much of anything. Um, here is another example. Um, and, and actually, I'll tell you, I keep the boar bristle brush around for times when my guys come in um, after running around in the mud and I use it to, can I get this footy up here? Wipe mud out from between their toes. Yeah. <laughs> that really short fur on them. Sometimes the short fur on their nose because they've got that tiny, tiny, tiny furs, tiny furs on their nose. But um, another type that you might see are these kinds, right? This one's pretty common. They're often used for like the bathtub, which is why I have one. Use it for the bathtub, right? It actually does get down a little bit, right? If it, if it gets down a little bit further, if you have a, a coat like a poodle coat or a Bichon coat or, or any of the doodles, any of the cockapoos and the mixes. If it's mixed with a poodle, it's likely to have a kind of a poodly coat. This isn't gonna do all that much, but it is better than nothing, okay? And it's gonna help you get through, because we're all gonna get through this. And as soon as I'm able to start helping you guys again and get in your houses and give all of my little doggy friends snuggles, because I do miss your dogs so much, as soon as we're able to get back to this, um, then we can work on like, all right, make sure we find you the right brush. <laughs> Now, I will say there were a couple on Amazon that are still there. So if you go looking for, like I said, for most of you, it's going to be a slicker brush. That's usually what they're called, slicker brush. And it's got these types of pins. And I'll get that closer. It's got these type of pins. They come out and they curve. Do you see how it comes out and bends? Right? That's the ideal. Now, if I'm going to show you, if you just dig deep with this, it's going to hurt. This is about how much pressure I'm putting on the dogs while I brush. Not hard. Don't press hard. You're going to scrape their skin. You're going to grab tangles and just yank them out. You're going to make your dog very unhappy. It's going to be terribly unpleasant for all of you. <laughs> but just a little bit. And I'll show you on my own hair. Like I said, it, it's dog grooming stuff, right? So I'll show you on my own hair. If I had a tangle, if this is my dog's hair, and there's a tangle someplace in here, I'm going to pinch it off and then brush through it, right? So that it's not gonna, all I feel, even if it gets pulled, is more like holding a ponytail, right? We can do that with our dogs. Pinch it off, brush, 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 all right? Um, and in addition, if you really are having trouble getting your dog to, to let you do stuff, let me know, because I do lessons online. We can talk that out. Yeah, I can help you with that online. I do lessons online. Um, part of my, my business is doing in-home training, in-home grooming. But so much of the training stuff is us talking together. And definitely, definitely we can do a lot of that online. So if your dog doesn't let you anything, anything, right? Your dog should let you do stuff. <laughs> um, is there anything you wouldn't let me do? Mm, anything? No, probably not. Probably not. All right. Um, everybody stay safe. Be kind to each other and um, make this bonding time. Spend some time with your dogs. They'll like it. All right. Bye.